They hate when you elevate. They stacking up losses, I'm handing them out. Yeah, I had to go delegate. Like What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Damian Cryer, and I'm back in the building with another video. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, blessed, amazing Monday evening. If you guys have not subscribed to the Cryer family, what you gotta do, boing, just turn that bell on so you are subscribed to the channel. Also, guys, I'll be dropping the links to my other channels in the description box down below. Though I have not uploaded in a couple of days on the Damien Cryer channel, I will be back in the next day or so stronger than ever, guys. So I appreciate all of you guys that's been reaching out to me like, Mr. Cryer, where the videos at? Where the videos at? Where the videos at? Where the videos at? So the videos are coming, guys. And as I promised you guys, I am back uploading on the Cryer family every single day, man. If I miss a day, Smack me or forgive me. Well, y'all can't smack me because y'all don't know how to get to me. But just please forgive me, man. So first, I want to start this video off by saying, you know, <clears throat> this is maybe the third year in a row that I have attempted to try to do this Vlogmas thing, man. Vlogmas is just doesn't work for me. Some For some reason, it just doesn't work, man. It's either I don't have it in me or I just... I be doing so much other stuff, man. I just be forgetting to do this day, that day, this day. But I found out, guys, that I'm gonna share some good news with you guys too. But I found out through the grapevine that when you do Vlogmas, Vlogmas is a video that you do every single day from December 1st leading up to December 25th. So it's actually one video every single day for those 25 days of December. And I came up with this hypothesis. Well, if I do a video every single day leading up to December 25th, to me, that's Vlogmas because I'm still doing a video every day. So the difference is putting Vlogmas in the title or just uploading a regular video. So since I dropped the ball on Vlogmas, I decided to do this video in front of my Christmas tree. So <laughs> this was day 11. So which means I'm all the way behind on Vlogmas. So I'm just gonna scratch it for now and continue doing the regular videos that I do every day. The good news that I do have, guys, I, I wanna just say this right here, man. I have learned not to share anything with anyone. Um, I've learned this year right here to really just keep myself, you know, occupied, keep myself motivated and keep myself in a good space and not really share too much of too much stuff with people. Because if you share something, it's gonna probably make it to the internet before you're able to share it. And that's why this year right here, I have moved so much differently. Have I slipped back a little bit? Have I slipped a little bit? Yes, I have. Hey, I'm only human, you know, but it's all good. But one of the good things I wanted to share with you guys is that, as you guys know, I've been in my house for about seven months now. Well, my town home, because it's not a house. I've been in my town home for about seven, going on eight months now, guys. And a few months ago, I started actually diving and looking around for me a home. I finally did it. I finally started looking for me a home. Not a home to rent, not a home to lease, stay at four year. I've actually been looking for myself a home. Now, I will say this, I had some people in comments a while back saying, you know, um, at your age, you should have had a house. At your age, you should have did this. At your age, you should have had that. But actually, what is really the right age to actually purchase your own home? Some people didn't purchase their first home until they was in their 60s or 70s. Or some blessing fell out of the sky and they was able to get it right in and there. Could I have got my home a long time ago? Of course I could have but I wanted to invest in myself. I didn't want to invest in a house at that particular time. I didn't want to invest, invest in a new home at that particular time. I wanted to invest in Damien Cryer. And one of the things that I did by investing in myself was I sat back and I hypothesized about a lot of stuff that took place in my life on and off of social media. I wanted to invest in myself to give myself time to really reflect on a lot of things that I want out of life. And one of the things that I invested in myself by doing was when I became single a while back, I decided to stay single. Um, opportunities came my way. Opportunities right to this day 
still comes my way. But I chose to invest in myself by saying, I don't wanna get caught up in nobody right now. And it's not to speak bad on anybody. I don't wanna get caught up in nobody, nobody problems. I don't, I don't, I don't wanna get caught up in trying to get to know somebody, getting to learn how to trust them, getting to know the family, getting to be involved. I just wanted to invest in myself. And by me investing in myself, I made sure that I kept my distance clear away from everyone pretty much. This, well, except like family, y'all know, I'm a, like, I'm always gonna be around my, my loved ones, my kids and stuff. So there's nothing ever gonna stop that. But I decided to just invest in myself. And that was one of my goals that I wanted to accomplish to see if I wanted to do it, to see if I can do it, to convince myself that no matter what comes at you, man, shoot it down, man, shoot it down. Look at the bigger picture. And now I feel truly, truly grateful that I made the decisions that I've made. I have always been one of those guys who quick to come on social media telling everybody how I have trust issues. I don't trust this person. I don't trust that person. And it's like, if I keep putting myself in a position to where I'm gonna have trust issues, I'm gonna always have trust issues. So what I did was I ejected myself from that equation. You guys know how many times I click on social media and you can tell when two people are going through it. They put it out there for everybody to see it. They put it out there for everybody to see it. So let those back and forth. I was one of those same ones, one of those same ones. But now I feel good because can't nobody come at me and say that they've been with me or anything. Like, so I had to first invest in myself by doing all that. Second thing I did was I tried to do things differently this year, uh, even from the top of the year into the current. And now this year is ending. And I feel like that I've had a lot of great success in investing in myself. And it wasn't just about the teeth. It wasn't just about staying single. It was about really just investing in myself to see if I can actually do it. You know, I, in, in my past life, I've had people tell me, like, you couldn't have did this without me. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't do this. So I decided to take that challenge and run with it. I decided, well, let's see if these people are right or are they just talking because they got lips. So I said, I need to prove it to myself that I can do it, man. I need to prove to myself that I can step up to the plate and do what I say I'm gonna do and say what I'm gonna do and do what I'm gonna say. And everything that I said I was gonna do, I literally do it. I make sure that I push myself every single day. So here's something exciting that I want to tell you guys. So about a year ago, I had started my journey off looking at houses. I wanted to look at homes, basically. And you know, I kind of beat myself up because I felt like that the housing market was too bad then and I wouldn't do it. And so I found it safe and better for me to just rent homes. And I realized that me doing that, I wasn't doing it by making the next person rich. I was actually, wasn't investing in myself. I was investing in someone else's property. Like right now, where I'm at, I don't own this. And so I decided, well, about a year ago, this is only like two people who really knows. I started looking at homes. I had someone with me, to, you know, to kind of guide me through it. And, you know, I had found three different homes right here. Well, two of them are right here in Houston. One of them is just right outside of Houston. And it's crazy because the one that I found, the one that I'm really looking at I've, um, um, is right outside of Houston. Um, and it is beautiful. So first thing first, when I first started looking at a home, I was just saying, look, I want a home because I feel like having a nicer home, I make my videos look better. Well, having a nicer home is not gonna matter when it comes to your videos because people are not watching the videos for your home. They're watching the videos for the content of the videos because they wanna be entertained. And then I found myself saying, wow, I'm a single man. I don't need all this space. You know, and then I found myself saying, wow, that monthly payment is just too darn high. And I kept finding every excuse in the world not to move forward. 
So last year when I looked, I just kind of threw the towel in. And then I got relaxed in my new home that I'm in now, which is a town home, the one that I'm currently at. And so I allowed myself to get comfortable. So recently I got back out there and started looking guys. And I came across a good friend of mine, I'm gonna say a very good friend of mine, uh, that I've been rocking with for a few months now. Um, and they just happened to be in real estate. And things have been going really, really well. And so this morning, I ended up getting a message to some really, really awesome, amazing news. I always wanted a two bedroom town home. with the two car garage. Um, and I actually found one, it is really nice. Really, really nice. Uh, this one again, this is like right, I don't wanna say outside of Houston, I wanna say it's like right on the outskirts of Houston. There's schools, um, there's a middle school, and there's a high school. Um, the house actually, um, it has a pool in the backyard. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It actually has a pool in the backyard. I'm gonna do a video for you guys because I'm supposed to be going to look at the house this week coming up right here. But today is Monday, so I'll be looking at the house this week right here. So um, I probably will be filming it, but I probably won't release that video too fast because you guys know how this stuff goes, man. You know, you gotta be careful what you put out there now. So I had already been looking at these homes, man but I didn't really want to say much about it at first because I had other personal stuff going on. And like I said, only two people knew about this. Um, well, two other people, um, my kids and the realtor that I've been cool with for the last few months. So that's, that's like really, really exciting news for me. And I felt like, you know, like with this year finna end off and a lot of the crazy stuff that's happened this year, man, I wanted to end it off with some good positive news because God is good, man. God is good all the time, man. And so it's like, um, it's what I always wanted. But see, I found every excuse not to get it. Like I found every excuse not to get it. My biggest goal was always to own my own home. Even if I couldn't buy the home until I was 60 or 70, it doesn't matter. It's people who buy homes right now 80 90 years old and still buying homes it's something that i always wanted to do but i always found an excuse not to move forward with making that dream become a reality you guys ever heard that saying like if you have like a good business deal on the table or like a huge awesome business offer people will be quick to tell you don't do that don't take that deal basically they will tell you how not to make money, but they will never sit down and take the time and tell you how to make money. Because like right now, they say that the market, the home market is in the garbage right now. And after doing some research, I did see where there are some areas where the house market is really, really trash right now. But even when the house market is trash, they say that's the best time to buy but it's really not the best time to buy unless you're spending cash. Now, if the market is trash right now and you buy, you're gonna be looking at a crazy, stupid interest rate. So, I learned a lot about the closing costs, the earnest money that you gotta put down, the closing cost fees. Um, I also found out that you have to have be locked in at your interest rate. Something that I didn't know because I've never bought a home before. So I found out about being locked in. So basically, if I got a house for 300K and I paid 25% down, and my percent was say, I'm just gonna throw a ridiculous number out there. My interest rate was 13.1%. Okay, I got a 13%, a 13.1% interest rate. What I did not know, what I did not know, what I found out was that even though it's a 13.1% interest rate, it doesn't mean it's locked in. A lot of people sign because they don't know. They look at it and say, whoa, that's a really good interest rate. But you have to make sure that the interest rate is locked in. And I'm telling you guys this because I got educated on this and I almost made the worst mistake. After looking at paperwork and stuff, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. It was a decent interest rate, but it was, okay. It was called a floating interest rate, which means 
One month, your mortgage could be $1,000. Next month, it can be $1,200. That's a floating interest rate. Don't never lock into that like that. So now since this is me being a first time home buyer, it looks like that it's going very well. I gotta make sure that I don't get caught up in a floating interest rate because that's something I didn't know. And as a matter of fact, I didn't even know it was such thing as a floating interest rate. I thought an interest rate is once it's locked in, it's locked in unless it's a floating interest rate. Some people don't find out that until it's too late. They start paying mortgage a few months after they move in their house and then they start off paying $1,200 a month. Next month, the bank is sending their statement or their invoice for $1,800 because the rate floats. So that's something that I had to be really careful of. The next thing that I ran into was I've been in my current townhome that I'm in right now today for eight months and I still got seven months left on my lease. So now the problem that I'm running into is that, okay, if I get the green light to go ahead and move into my other house, that still leaves me an additional six or seven months on this house. So now I have to figure out how to finagle that around because I can't just up and just leave. I mean, I can up and just leave at any time. The thing is, they gonna want that money every month. So that's right there. So I kind of beat myself up a little bit because I said, well, maybe I should have waited until my last three months of my lease was up before I moved forward with purchasing this house. But then I also told myself if I would have waited till the last three months was up before I purchased this new home, would it would it, would the uh, home industry would it still been in the garbage? Because this industry changes, man. Like from day to day, it changes. Well, I ain't gonna say day to day, but one minute the market is up, the next minute the market is garbage, man. The market is garbage. So it's it's kind of like one of those things where I'm kind of stuck between a rock and a hard spot. So moral of the story is guys, I'm very happy. It looks like that I'm getting a green light to be able to be into my own house soon. Again, there's gonna be some good videos coming for you guys that I'm really wanting to share with you guys. Now I will show the house, but I, there's certain things that I'm not gonna show of the house. You guys know how this works. I'll show some things inside the house, but I will not vlog outside. So I just wanted to share that with you guys, man. And another thing that I wanted to share with you guys, man, it's sort of just like a little bit of advice, man. A lot of people, they go to other people for advice. And a lot of us, we seem to take advice from the wrong people. We take advice from people that won't even take their own advice. Some of us will take advice from people that we never even met in our life but we will take advice from them. Some people will ill advise you and you will miss a good opportunity taking the advice of other people. And that's exactly what almost happened to me. I was ill advised at one time about a decision that I wanted to make and I decided, to, and, and, and actually, I actually believed their advice. And then one day I decided to just take matters into my own hands and everything ended up working out in my favor. So don't always take the advice of people, man. I'm not saying all advice is bad advice, but all I'm saying is when somebody gives you advice, you should be able to do your own due diligence, research stuff, man, look at this stuff. Don't just take what people say at face value and run with it and believe what they say is true, man. But anyway, I'm not gonna make this video long. I love you guys. I just wanna bring you a video today, give you guys a little bit good news because I'm very excited, man. And you know, I wanted to share this information earlier, but I just couldn't share it right then and there. But uh, this is my video for the day. I love you guys. Smash that like button. Till next time, it's your boy Damien Cryer. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video.